Welcome back everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be looking at fitting models using R-style formulas with stats models. So let's get started. So first off, let's kind of just talk about uh, all the types of things that is going on with stats models. All right. So again, we can fit statistical models um, using these R-style formulas. Okay. So for those of you that are wanting to kind of move over from R and come on over to Python, this is a great way to kind of segue into those. Now, uh, internally, stats models use the Patsy package, which we've used in the previous lecture, um, to convert formulas and data to matrices uh, that are then gonna be used to fit our models. Now, we'll start off with, uh, again, one of our normal um, simplified examples, and let's load everything that we need. So we'll import stats models uh, dot API as SM. Uh, we'll import stats models dot formula uh, form, form eula dot api as smf then we'll import uh, numpy as mp import pandas as pd okay and getting in our basic um, imports in that we want now the, again let's kind of just start out with a basic um, ols regression again we've we've used this um, example multiple times um, and so uh, I'll go through it very quickly just in just in this one cell here. Um, so again, let's go in and df is equal to sm dot uh, data sets dot uh, get r data sets data set. And then again, we'll use the GURI uh, data, the historical data. Uh, and then we'll do dot data now. As before, let's say that we want to um, maybe uh, just grab um, the lottery data. Uh, we want literacy data. We want the wealth data. And then we want this categorical data of region. <coughs> Dot drop. In a. And again, I'm just doing this all in this one cell because we have a couple other examples that we want to go into. Um, so let's go on and uh, do... Uh, res is equal to smf.ols. Uh, our formula is equal to um, lottery. And then we want to check literacy uh, plus wealth plus region. Uh, data is equal to df.fit. Okay, and then res.summary. And again, I'm skipping in the model step in here. We're just doing this all in one line uh, so we can see our results here. All right, and so this is, this is our first, um, first little uh, example here with a basic uh, linear regression, okay? Uh, so we can also see here that it automatically did our dummy variables for us as well because it uh, saw that region was a categorical variable. Um, now we can also go and do this uh, very specifically, okay? Because this did it automatically. Maybe let's say it doesn't work, or maybe you want a little bit more control. You want it to be um, more kind of human readable. Uh, and let's say here then that we'll use categorical variables, and I'm going to give it a little bit of space. And so we can do the same thing. So I'm just going to overlap res here. Uh, now, I'm going to change it a little bit. So, again, we printed out this, um, this summary above. Patsy, again, determined that region itself was a categorical variable, which it is. So, um, if we, uh, let me put in something and do something like, uh, actually, that's not a good place for it. Let me put it down here so we can see it. Um, let's do df dot um, info. And here we can see that region is an object. And again, if I do something like, um, uh, what do we want in here, uh, df.head, we can see in here again that it, it is this um, ENC. Uh, I, I believe there's maybe an S in there as well. And so these, and maybe a W, there's quite a few. Um, and actually, we can actually just check that real quick. Um, So E, N, uh, C, S, and W. So these are these are our unique um, uh, categories. 
And there now, if region had been an integer though, okay, instead of um, the string values, we would have ran into an error. It would have tried to have uh, ran it um, with those numbers as numerical variables, okay? So if that's the case, then we need to explicitly state that it is a category. And uh, we're just gonna use this uh, uh, in this example. So so to explicitly state that it's a categorical variable, and actually, um, I'm gonna be a little lazy and I'm gonna copy this whole thing and actually just take it down here because um, it's the same. And so, but what we do here is we change and we add in C, okay, C for categorical, okay? And this C in here is going to force it. So again, if we do something like um, res dot summary, and you know what, let me just call this uh, res underscore C for categorical. Uh, we can do that as well. And again, we see we get the same results that we had before. Now, we've already seen uh, this nice little tilde in here, okay? And so you can think about that maybe as the uh, uh, separator, okay? It separates the left-hand side of the equation from the right-hand side of the equation. And we also have this plus symbol, uh, again, to designate a matrix, okay? Uh, so again, here... Uh, letter C and all of these could technically be some X uh, matrix, uh, if you will. Now we also can have the minus sign to remove columns or variables. Okay, uh, so for example, let's say that in this, in this example, uh, we want to maybe remove the constant. Okay, because it does, if you look here, uh, we do have an intercept in here. So we want to remove that constant or that intercept from our model. So the way to go about doing that is to just do this minus one, well, not 12, minus one. And this in here will remove the constant. Okay, so in C for no constant, whoops, in C. And so here you can see now we do not have that constant, the coefficients have changed. Okay, uh, we also have um, a couple other additions that we can use in here. So this is um, uh, explicitly, uh, let's say removing to remove um, variables, okay? So we also have in this uh, mul multiplicative uh, type operator and interaction terms, okay? So and those are gonna be very, very useful to us. So here is um, interactions. So again, I'm going to put this in here and um, I'll say INT for interactions. And what we use with the interaction term. So here, let's say that we wanna see the interaction between uh, literacy and wealth. Okay, this can be one uh, and I'll call this um, interaction one. Okay, and then we can also uh, do the same thing in here uh, with the multiplication sign, uh, which includes individual columns that were mul uh, multiplied together. Okay, so um, this is the uh, matrix, uh, uh, the matrix version. Okay, and then here uh, we have in here the individual columns. And so we'll, we'll, I'll show you guys the difference here in just a second. And this, in this instance, is the uh, multiplication sign, or the star. And this instead of, and we'll say is uh, interaction two. So we'll run this, and now you can see down here, we have this interaction term, okay, uh, between literacy and wealth. And then again, if we go on and uh, look here, and we'll, we'll see here that there is definitely going to be uh, significant differences uh, between the two. Um, and you know what? Let's actually, to simplify things, let's remove region in there, and let's also get rid of uh, the intercept. I want this to be as simple, simple as possible so we can actually just see. And maybe instead we also just do something like uh, print or es int one dot params. Um, 
Okay, so here you see that it's uh, literacy and wealth, and then here if we multiply them, let me get rid of region and do minus one here, and again, we'll do print, or yes, int two dot params. You can see here that it does each of the individual columns as well as the interaction term. Okay, and so these are very useful for us whenever you're wanting to have different uh, types of um, combinations of your variables when you're wanting to look at them to really see what's going on with your models. And uh, again, those of you that have studied econometrics or um, advanced uh, statistics, you guys are going to really understand these as well. And maybe later on in the series, we'll definitely go in more in detail into those. Um, let's also talk about uh, functions and vectorized functions. Uh, so here we can say, let me bring that down just a bit more. And here uh, we have uh, functions. So I'm going to go in and overwrite that. Um, SMF OLS in here. And again, we have our formula is equal to, and if we say lottery, and then we want maybe the natural log of literacy. Oh, literacy is capitalized. OK, we can actually put that in there just with um, just with utilizing um, uh, NumPy uh, np log in here, OK? Uh, so we can actually use those functions inside. So again, we'll do something like um, res.summary here. And you can see now that it, this actually just shows np log of literacy. So that is a fantastic way. We can even create up, for example, our own function. So um, let's say that you have some zero values in there. You're having a bit of trouble. And so we can define uh, something like uh, uh, log plus one. OK, that takes in some value of x. And this will return mp.log of x uh, plus one. So then we can actually use that uh, same thing inside of our equation. I'm going to just grab this, and I'll put this down here. And instead of MP log, uh, we would have a log plus 1. And you can see here now, we can even use our own um, functions inside as well. And it's going to allow us to do the same the same thing, which is absolutely fantastic for us when we're wanting to uh, have more complex equations. We can write up our own functions, and it saves us a lot of time later on when we're wanting to reuse them or whatnot. Um, so I'm going to leave this here. If you guys like this, please comment, subscribe, and hit that like button, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.